So, um, excuse me for a minute. I'll just take a sip of water. Okay. So, um, let's talk about flatness. So, um, flatness is nothing but a tolerance that controls the waviness of a surface. So, I have a surface, something like this. In CAD, it will look perfectly a plain line like this. But in reality, it's never a plain line. It always has some kind of waves like this. Okay. And uh, as a GDNT engineer, I have to control the flatness. I have to make sure that the part is perfectly plain so that it attached perfectly to the other mating part. Now, the suppliers are very tricky. And if you don't give any flatness, they will just give any part which has which, which the surface finish is something like this. I don't want this. I want this surface to be perfectly plain. But hey, nothing is perfect in this world. Everything has imperfections. So this part also has an imperfection. So what I would say is, that's fine. It's okay you have imperfections in your surface. I want the imperfections to lie between two parallel planes of 0 0.25 millimeter. So the symbol donated is something like this. Flatness, 0 0.25. and I will attach it to this surface over here. So um, what the uh, supplier would do is he will create a surface and that surface would lie between these two parallel planes of 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So um, let's say as long as the waves of the surface are within this, I'm fine. And suddenly if the waves goes, let's say boop, boop, then, then, we, then the part basically is out of spec and I cannot accept the part. So the flatness is measured with something called a dial gauge indicator. What it does is that it just, uh, the, uh, the checker just moves the dial gauge from one point all the way to the other point over here. And then he sets, he kind of marks two points on the dial gauge indicator. And as long as while moving the dial gauge indicator on the surface, the pin of the dial gauge indicator falls in between these two marks, then the part is okay. If the pin falls out of those marks, then the part is out of spec and hence I cannot accept it. So uh, for a machining surface, uh, like I said, the uh, flatness 0 0.25 is perfectly okay. And you can call this out 0 0.25 on any surface without having an additional cost to the part. But then if you call something like 0 0.01, then it will dramatically increase the cost to your part. And then your manager will come behind you and ask, why do you have to give such a tight flatness? So for normal parts, 0.25, perfectly okay. And then it is generally given to the primary datum. So, excuse me, let me just clean this up. Uh, so in the meantime, I'll just, uh, you know, ask, uh, go over some questions. Mm -hmm. So first question is from Samir Gupta. As a design engineer, uh, should a person uh, know the tolerance of every feature or is it something that the industry will provide us? Uh, right. So um, again, the industry will provide us when you go into the company, start working in the company. Um, within a few days, you will go through. Okay, let me give you my example. I was a freshly baked engineer, went directly into the dimensional aspects uh, of industry. I had no idea what the tolerances should be. So the first week, what I did is I just, uh, all I knew is I had to work on mounts and uh, steering systems. So what I did is I went through uh, the previous drawings that were there for the mounts. So basically FCA has been making cars since the last hundred years. Um, so what I did is I went through the drawings in the last four or five years for the mounts and steering systems and uh, understood, okay, generally if it's a flatness, we give a 0.25. If it's a position, we give one millimeter tolerance. And uh, that is how it's a very based on, uh, highly based on the industrial experience. And of course your uh, uh, colleagues and uh, your manager would help you out with deciding the numbers, but it cannot be too high. So flatness uh, to just to give you an idea, you cannot give a flatness of 1.0 because then the supplier will kind of take advantage of it. And you cannot give this uh, flatness of something like 0 0.01. Then it will, the cost would be just highly costly. The part would be highly costly. So uh, based on the reference parts, when you go into the industry, this number is decided. Okay. All right, uh, perfect. So I guess um, 
the next question is from Kavaljeet. Is it necessary to have zero degree of degrees of freedom? Because at the end, the machines have some degrees of freedom. Right. Again, it depends on part to part. Um, uh, you are right, Kavaljeet. Uh, there are some parts which doesn't need to have, you doesn't need to construct all six degrees of freedom. Um, let me give you an example. So um, let's say I have a rod over here. Okay. And I have a sleeve over here. Oops, I'm sorry. A sleeve over here. And um, for the functional aspect, I don't know where it can be used, but I want the sleeve to kind of move alongside the rod for the functionality of, uh, uh, of the entire part. In this case, you, you don't have to uh, fix all the six degrees of freedom. In this case, uh, you won't fix all six degrees of freedom. But if it's a rigid part, um, for example, let's say I'm attaching a bracket to a transmission. In this case, I don't want the bracket to move. So uh, basically, once I torque all these four bolts, I don't want the bracket to move in any direction. In this case, you have to constrain all six degrees of freedom. Again, it's based on the functional aspects of the part. Uh, in this lecture, we are just going with a, a very simple bracket that needs to be attached to another uh, fixture. So uh, I said that we need to constrain six degrees of freedom. But yes, in real life, based on the function, you don't need to constrain all six degrees of freedom. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. So we have uh, two more questions, actually mm -hmm. three more. So one is from Rahul J. How is surface tolerance defined in feature controlled frames? Uh, so surface tolerance in the sense uh, profile of a surface, I believe that's what uh, you're asking. So uh, in the next uh, fourth slide, I have called out profile of a surface tolerance and I'm going to talk about uh, profile of surface tolerance. But to give you an idea uh, how a profile of a surface is called out, it's called out with a symbol, something like this. Okay. So this is for this symbol over here is for the position tolerance. And this symbol over here is for surface profile or profile of a surface. Both mean the same thing. Okay. All right. So final question for uh, the second Q&A session is from Ajay. What mm -hmm. type of symbols are used for weldment and sheet metal parts, uh, especially for bending? I, I guess he's talking about bending and, mm -hmm. uh, for weldment and sheet metal parts, what type of symbols are used? Okay, so uh, the thing is, uh, again, there are 14 symbols that we have in GDNT. And either of these are used in uh, weldment, either it's in weldment or it's a sheet metal. These 14 symbols are universal. They can be used to any part you want. And based on the functionality of the part, you can pick any of this. So, okay, if you want the, uh, so if let's say you have a plate, like this. And then um, you're going to create a bending operation along this axis. So in the end, you will have a plate which looks something like this. And then you need to control, uh, let's say, the surface over here. You can just give a flatness of whatever the value you want. And that's fine. So this 14 symbol are universal and they can be used for any manufacturing operations you want. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Prasad. So you can continue and we'll have just one last Q&A towards the end. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, guys. Uh, so please, uh, you know, pay attention to the presentation. And again, we really like the questions that we're getting. So we'll have one more Q&A session towards the end. So if you have any loaded question, just wait and then ask them. 